is what's happening now. Sunshine is back, but those 70 degree temperatures are not. Why I'm getting all choked up about the cooler air, Paula. Hey, Ben, just in case you're thinking about adopting truly your very best friend who just laid down on me. You know what? It could actually be a lot more challenging than you think, Karen, and I'm going to explain why. All right. Thank you, Paula. Also, this video has frequent flyers blasting United, but could you get kicked off a flight someday? Help me, Hank, here with some answers. And a former camp counselor in West Bloomfield makes a plea deal in a child pornography case. First at four, we start with breaking news. A federal grand jury has indicted State Senator Burt Johnson of Highland Park on charges of conspiracy and theft. His home and office were just raided a few weeks ago. The U.S. Attorney's Office says Johnson borrowed thousands of dollars in cash from an unnamed co-conspirator. Then he gave that person a so-called ghost job, knowing the person would get paid without doing any work. Prosecutors say the employee received $23,000 of taxpayer money. We are gathering more details on this breaking news and we'll have a live update tonight at 5. Also, first of all, the sentencing of that former camp counselor at the Jewish Community Center over in West Bloomfield. Today, Matthew Cup was sentenced to 10 years in prison on child pornography charges. If you recall, it was back in August he pled guilty to distributing child porn. Today, Cup was sentenced to prison along with seven years of supervised probation following his release. He has 60 days to turn himself in but does not require a tether and can leave his home until he does. Well, the search for answers continues at this hour after three businesses over in Corktown were broken into overnight. Slow's Barbecue, Johnny Noodle King, and a used car dealership were all victims of break-ins early this morning. Now, despite the break-ins, it didn't appear anything was stolen from Slows or Johnny Noodle King. Unfortunately, the used car dealership wasn't so lucky. As the owner says, about $5,000 worth of his tools were stolen. Police are looking for suspects and trying to determine if those crimes were connected. One person is in the hospital right now after a car accident in Warren. Police say the crash happened about 3.30 this morning on Mound Road just south of 12 Mile. That's where a car slammed into a semi and emergency crews had to cut the roof off the car to rescue someone trapped inside. At this time, no word on what led to the crash or that person's condition. Oh, we sure hope you've been enjoying a pretty decent spring day because... We're not sure about the rest of the week. Let's get our first <laughs> forecast with Ben. That's why I'm here, Karen. I want to make you sure about that. Uh, temperatures have cooled off a little bit. We were in the 60s earlier, at least at Metro. Now it's a string of 50s pretty much everywhere, and the winds are noticeable out there, about 15 to 20 miles an hour across the area. It is going to be a cool finish tonight. We'll look at those low temperatures in your four zone forecast, close to average for the middle of the week, but the 70s do come back for Easter weekend. It is not going to be dry and sunny, however. We'll talk about that in your seven day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. Karen. Well, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is in Russia today facing a minefield of hot topics to discuss with leaders in Moscow. From the chemical weapons attack in Syria to the American missile response, there's a lot riding on this visit. Kimberly Gill joins us with the very latest to set the stage for this diplomatic face off. Kim. Yeah, there really is a lot riding on this visit, Karen. Good afternoon to you. When Rex Tillerson was a top man at Exxon Oil Company, he received an Order of Friendship Award from Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. But there won't be any buddy-buddy atmosphere in Moscow now when the new Secretary of State takes Russia to task about developments in Syria. Now, Tillerson arrived in Moscow earlier today and got the normal formal greeting from Russian diplomats. But behind the handshakes, there's rising tension between Moscow and Washington. More than 80 people died last week in a chemical weapons attack tied to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's forces. That attack prompted a U.S. response with a missile barrage on a Syrian military airfield. At a diplomatic conference in Italy this morning, Tillerson reminded Russia that it pledged in 2013 to find and remove all chemical weapons from Syria. It is unclear whether Russia failed to take this obligation seriously or Russia has been incompetent. But this distinction doesn't much matter to the dead. 
Now, speaking in Moscow earlier today, Vladimir Putin suggested Syrian rebels were to blame for the chemical weapons attack. Russia remains a strong supporter of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. And Secretary of State Tillerson made the U.S. view very clear today when he said Assad's rule in Syria is coming to an end. Tillerson is scheduled to meet Russia's foreign minister Wednesday. It's nearly midnight there in Moscow. And as of right now, there are no plans for him to meet Vladimir Putin. Karen? All right. Thank you, Kim. In other news at this hour, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow was in Detroit today as she announced her plan to keep jobs in America. Stabenow was at Detroit Denim on Franklin Street this morning to lay out her American jobs agenda. According to Stabenow, the American jobs agenda will ensure products are being made in America, close loopholes that send jobs overseas, and hold countries accountable for unfair trade practices that hurt workers and manufacturers. Animal lovers are going to really love this story. If you're looking to adopt a pet, you might find something surprising at local shelters. Today is National Pet Day, and our own Paula Tubman has uncovered an emerging trend at local rescues. So, Paula, what have you found? Well, I'm finding that some shelters actually have an inventory problem. And, and listen, here's the good thing about that. That means that they can spend resources on other things. What's not so great about it is if you're looking for your true best friend, like Dolly Moo here, who's looking for her forever home, right? Yes. Hard to say who had the bigger smile, Lucy or Laura. When I saw Lucy, I just fell in love with her. She was just so cute. She had those puppy dog eyes. It was just like, love me. And I melted. Lucy is leaving the Michigan Humane Society with Laura to be loved, to be cherished, to be home. <laughs> it's a lucky find and a lucky match for both because the good news, like Uber and $5 cups of coffee, adoption is in these days, way in when it comes to pets. We are seeing a trend where more and more folks are realizing that adoption is in fact their better option. At the Detroit Humane Society, the pickings are slim at the moment. Six puppies from the same litter and only a couple of cats. Four-year-old Yazir was anxiously waiting for adoption hours to start so he could nab one of them. Cause, cause they're, cause they're so cute. It's a good problem to have for the animal shelter. And at the Rochester Hills location, while there was more of a selection today, we watched pets going home and many humans coming in and looking. An adoption is a great value. So these kitty cats, for instance, $75 for the kitty cats, 110 for the pair. Now what happens is not only are you getting a cat that's already spayed or neutered, they're microchipped, they're up to date on all their age appropriate vaccines including rabies. You get access to our phenomenal vet centers with a discount and you also get continued adopter support. Anecdotally, the Humane Society sees that when the economy is strong, like it is right now, the need to surrender goes down. The want and the ability to share a home with a pet goes up. It does thin out the inventory. What we're seeing is a lower number of surrender intakes with a higher number of adoption rate. All animals need homes and love as much as they need food and water. No matter the breed, the species, the age, the gender. Today is a great day to be a lab mixed named Lucy on, sweet. and a human named Laura. She's going to a good home. Yeah. I know. Oh, yes, she's absolutely going to a great home. Congratulations to Lucy and Laura. But listen, here's the thing. Obviously, there's a natural ebb and flow at shelters. When puppy season ends, then kitten season is just getting going. So you've got to keep checking back. But this really is, come here, Dolly. There you go. This really is a great option. And just in case you are looking, this is Dolly. Like I said, Dolly Moo. She is looking for a home, and she is a real sweetheart, Karen. Dolly is darling. I really love her. I hope she finds a home very, very soon. Paula, we appreciate it. And of course, we'll put your story on your Facebook page. So if people need some more advice when they're looking for a pet, they can check it out. Thanks, Paula. Well, still ahead, first at four, a police officer caught on camera getting violent with the suspect, what the video shows and what happened to that officer. Also ahead, designs like this could cause a shopping frenzy this weekend. The latest high fashion, low cost partnership. But up first, a new statement from United Airlines CEO about this video. Many of you are outraged, but our Hank Winchester has a consumer alert for you.
Karen, this video has everybody talking. What you may not know is that every airline has the right, right to remove you from a flight. Coming up, how you can lower the chances of that happening to you. He was the coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. A string of robberies all at the same apartment complex in Roseville and targeting pizza delivery drivers. One of the drivers recalls the terrifying moment. It's going to happen to somebody else. They will keep doing it. If they got me and two other pizza drivers that night, they're going to get more people. Hear his message to other pizza delivery drivers at 6. All right, thank you, Coco. And we are back with this video that has outraged people all around the world. United Airlines pulling a passenger off a flight because they needed a seat for a crew member. Late today, United CEO apologized, saying, quote, no one should ever be mistreated this way. While many consumers are stunned, airlines do have the right to remove any passenger if a flight is oversold. So what rights do passengers have? We brought in consumer investigator Hank Winchester to kind of break it down for us, because when you do buy your ticket, you do acknowledge that if they're overbooked, you know, you could lose your seat. Right, and that's one of the things we talked to the travel agent about because now when you buy tickets, everything's done online. You may not read that fine print, but there are some things that you can do to lessen the chances of that happening to you. It's the video that's gone viral, a United passenger being dragged off the aircraft after refusing to get off the plane. The flight oversold, the seat needed for the crew. Even veteran travel agents like Pam Nikitas of Joan Anderson Travel in Detroit couldn't believe how this one played out. It wasn't good customer service. United CEO has said the airline will investigate how this happened. <laughs> passengers being told to get off a flight is nothing new. Roughly 45,000 passengers every year in the U.S. find themselves in that situation. And in the old days, when you had paper tickets, you could see all that information. Delta, the largest carrier out of Metro, also reserves the right to remove you from your flight. It's all laid out in the fine print of your ticket. Check in 24 hours before and make sure you have a seat assignment just so that you are a little bit more secure. Those with status, those who buy a first class or a comfort level seat or those traveling with small children also more likely to avoid being randomly selected for removal. Now, as you know, airlines will sometimes offer a cash incentive or a voucher to get you off of that plane. Well, in this case, it clearly did not work. Uh, this is a PR nightmare. It is, and it keeps getting United. worse and worse because at first when they apologized, they apologized for the overbooking, but they didn't apologize for the treatment of the past. Right, I mean, remember this video was shot and went viral, started going viral over the yeah. weekend. Yeah. So this story has legs, but a lot of it for us is making sure the consumer understands that they have rights. All right, All right. thank you, Hank. Sure. Appreciate it. Well, let's send it over to Ben for a look at our forecast. Enjoy it while it lasts, right, Ben? Yeah, not a bad day out there, especially on the east side where we saw a little bit more sun than the rest of the area has seen. The winds are up pretty much everywhere, though. Those speeds are about 15 to 25 miles an hour across the area, and they're coming in out of the west. That is going to usher in some cooler air starting tonight. We've got some chilly temperatures that we're going to look at in your four zone forecast coming up. You can tell where the clouds sort of took a little bit of a break here. That's allowed those numbers to get into the mid 60s right now here on the east side. 63 in Detroit, Mount Clemens 64 and Port Huron at 64. But we actually saw some warmer temperatures than this. Uh, these numbers are on their way down. You get out here into our west zone. Uh, numbers barely at 50 there in Howland, 49 in Flint. So quite a spread between the uh, west and east sides of the area. Still a lot of clouds across a good chunk of the area. And there you can see that hole in the cloud cover there that uh, at least the east side saw uh, earlier this afternoon. Tonight we will get partly cloudy skies in here. High pressure is going to settle in tomorrow, meaning more sunshine, but with the cooler start and the cooler air coming in. Temperatures are going to struggle to hit 60 uh, in the afternoon. That's still above average, slightly above average for this time of year. High pressure is going to remain in control through the middle part of the week. And then on Thursday, you can see the showers trying to make their way through here, but we've kept the forecast dry, probably an increase in clouds, and that's going to be about it. Unfortunately, it does look like our next chance showers and storms coming for the Easter weekend on both Saturday and Sunday. More on that in a second. Here are the low temperatures tonight in your four zone forecast. Right around 40 degrees for most of our metro zone. 41 in the city is what we'll call it. South zone lows tonight. A little bit cooler uh, the further inland away from the lakes. You get 39 in Milan, 39 in Belleville, 41 here in Monroe and Luna Pier. West zone lows. Some of the uh, chilliest numbers will be out in Howell at 38. Fenton, you'll be at 38. 
and a string of 40s here from Novi down to Canton. North zone lows for tonight, anywhere between 36 in Sandusky and 40 in Rochester Hills and Macomb. So we dipped out a little bit here midweek starting tomorrow. Temperatures again only in the upper 50s. We'll be coming with a lot of sunshine and the winds are going to be lighter tomorrow than what we're dealing with today. It's 57 there on Thursday with those clouds around. That's as cool as it gets and we start ramping up again as we head towards the weekend. So we will get the 70s back for both Saturday and Sunday. We're keeping chances of showers and storms in in the morning on both Saturday and Sunday. So sunrise services uh, may have a few raindrops around on Easter Sunday. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. High fashion, low cost. We'll show you the new clothes that could create a shopping frenzy this weekend. But up first, this video is tough to watch. A police officer caught on camera kicking a suspect. The officer's history and what's happened since the video became public. We've got that story next. But first, as we go to break, the markets did close down for the day. You can take a close look at your screen and see all the specifics. We'll be right back. A police officer is in trouble because of this video. You can see him kick a handcuffed suspect in the head. This happened in Columbus, Ohio. Police say the suspect threatened to shoot people inside a home before he was arrested. Social justice advocates question why he was kicked since he was already on the ground. The same officer, Zachary Rosen, was involved in a 2016 shooting of a suspect, but a grand jury refused to indict him. Rosen has now been reassigned to non-patrol duties indefinitely. All right, let's talk about trending stories. A library group is taking aim at Bill Cosby, trying to remove his children's books from school libraries. The American Library Association targets several books each year, usually based on content that it finds objectionable. Well, now it's going after Cosby because of the sexual assault allegations against him. One member says it is the first time the group has gone after books because of the author not necessarily the content of the book. Cosby's Little Bill series tells the story of a five-year-old growing up in Philly. This is the same group that targeted Harry Potter books because of witchcraft. There has been a lot of debate on those fitness trackers that monitor your heart rate. Well, a new study found while smartwatches and wristbands are not as precise as monitors used at the doctor's offices, they are pretty accurate enough for the needs of most people who use them. Now, this is a small study looking at 40 healthy adults. We checked in with our own Dr. McGeorge, and he does warn that you should not use the trackers to monitor any serious health problems. Do you have any of those trackers? No, but I would think just having one would sort of get you to do it more. It does when you you're did. wearing it, and then you look, and you're like, oh, wow, I thought I was active. And then you're like, no, I wasn't. Where's yours at? I forgot to put it on today. <laughs> Got to keep walking, get my steps in. <laughs> Target hoping that working with Victoria Beckham will create another fashion frenzy this weekend. Take a look at this. The former Spice Girl has designed a new line of clothes hitting stores this weekend. Take a look. Beckham has created more than 200 items for women's and women and girls and toddlers. Price ranges from six bucks to seventy dollars. They include items like this in plus sizes. Previous high fashion, low cost items from designers like Alexander McQueen and Lily Pulitzer went really fast. Beckham's collection goes on sale Sunday through April 30th or while supplies last. Well, many flowers are known for looking and smelling beautiful. Not this one, but a lot of people are still lining up to see it. And some of them are smelling it. We'll talk about it next. Just days before the parole board will vote on whether or not to give white boy Rick a parole hearing, the officer in charge the day he was arrested is speaking out. Oh yeah, you gotta watch this kid, this white kid here. He's always in, involved in, in stuff everybody know. He's speaking from his senior assisted living center in Ohio to finally set the record straight. Eight kilos and $35,000, so that, that's, a, that's a big bust, right? Hell yeah. It filled up front seat of my car. Does Rick Warshi's arresting officer think he should stay in prison or be released? A Defenders exclusive tonight at 11. Finally, first of all, you've heard the saying, stop and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. Well, you've probably never heard someone say, stop and smell the Titan Arum. I have not. <laughs> But Either apparently right. some people are doing that. <laughs> uh, this is widely reported as the biggest flower in the world. It is also notorious for it is unpleasant smell. 
It has a very short lifespan, which is why people are rushing to a botanical garden in Belgium today when the Titan Arum was seen in bloom. Very rare sight for visitors considering it only blooms every three to seven wow. years. Doesn't it look like a flower from like Alice in Wonderland or something? Yeah, and that guy's nose He's is really right into in it. it. It must not smell that bad. But don't you do that when something smells bad? Like, oh, this smells gross. Smell it. Uh, yeah, I guess. You don't do that? I do that. Thanks for joining us for First at Four. Inside Edition's next. <laughs>